Hi everyone. Hi Melissa. Hi Carmen. Now I um, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Carmen Beaumont. I'm the director of Vitas Ecology, and this is um, one of a gorgeous um, child and adolescent psychologist, uh, Melissa Bashir. And I wanted to interview you, Melissa, because I know that quite a few of the parents we're having at the moment are struggling with a number of um, issues, and I just wanted to for you to share with our community some of those struggles and some of the conversations that you're having with them in terms of suggestions and, and tips that I'm sure will help all those parents in the community at the moment. So would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Melissa Borchet. I'm a child and adolescent psychologist or a developmental psychologist by training. I've been working at VITA for three or four years now, I think, and have been in practice for over 10 years, um, initially working with kids with disabilities all the way through to families in really high functioning positions. And I work with infants all the way through to my oldest client at 93 years old. Um, lately, I've been working at Vida and at home as well, um, working with a lot of families that are struggling with COVID at the moment. Yeah. Yes. So what would be some of the struggles, would you say, Melissa, that um, some of our parents are having? So just to share with some of my parents in conversations that some of my parents are having, um, just like myself, is um, home learning. <laughs> and um, yes she giggles and um all these you know different i guess information that it's new to me anyway I, I haven't been a student for so long and i know that as a parent is it's putting a lot of pressure on um children missing out on content and how to best support them um, but that's also resulting in um, what we call at home mums gone Spanish. Um, so having um, meltdowns at home. Um, so please enlighten and help me, um, people like me, in that scenario. Sure. Um, oh, your poor kids. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to my best friend last night and she's got three kids under 10 um, going from prep all the way through to uh, year five um, oh, yeah. and, uh, you know, you know, prep grade four and grade five. So wow. really different uh, learning yeah. ages. Um, one with some, you know, who's kind of still trying to figure out how to write her name. And, um, you know, my friend is, is stressing about how are we going to teach letters? What letters are we at? I can't remember learning how to, to write. How am I going to teach that? And, and how am I going to help my five-year-old segment bureaucracy when I don't know what a segment is? Um, and those are all really relevant questions. Um, what I, I will say is that... Looking up things on um, YouTube, on how, you know, yes. chemistry stuff and... You know, there's a lot of, by the way, fantastic and amazing Indian teachers, but trying to navigate their accent as well as understanding <laughs> ideas and concepts is stressful. Yes, it is so stressful. And, and you know, it's stressful for the parents and it's stressful for kids and it's stressful for teachers. Yes. Um, everybody is stressed. And so I think really what we need to do is manage our expectations. Yes. Um, this goes for high school kids as much as it goes for primary age kids and even kinder kids. We need to downgrade the stress. Um, my, my biggest message, I think, overall throughout this whole period is that at the end of COVID and at the end of lockdown and isolation, I want for kids to be able to say that this was the greatest time of their lives. That, you know, at their 21st birthday party, when their parents are putting up photos of their, you know, terrible schoolwork that they did when they were locked down, that the kids can go, I know it was terrible, but I loved that my mum helped me and made learning fun. I love that my dad was sitting down with me and taking a bit of time. I also loved playing games. Um, I think that at this point in time, this should be really not about managing 
every single bit of content that we can get kids, you know, get into their brains. But how can we actually keep them engaged in learning? How can we keep them engaged with school? Can, how can we make learning fun? And how can we help them stay engaged with the family? Those are my expectations. I think realistically, and when I've done some reading about what are the, the um, around the world expectations about kids and their development through this period, is not necessarily that we are expecting kids to progress with their academic content, but that um, they, they plateau. We don't want them to go backwards. So if at the end of this, what you can say is that you've got a kid who entered this period of remote learning with the same amount of knowledge that they've left it with, not that they have left it with less, yeah. then you're doing incredibly well. Um, and so, you know, I've got parents who are saying to me that they're trying to upload all of this work onto Seesaw and they log in and they can see there's 20 different tasks for the day and they feel like they're failing their kids when they're only getting up seven of them. Um, you know what? Just do seven. If all you get through is seven, brilliant. If you get through two, that's fine. If you, at the end of that day, feel like you managed to sit down with your kid, you had a great conversation, you kind of maybe built some of their language skills, you kept them engaged in the idea of learning, even if they couldn't sit still for more than five minutes, brilliant. Because in a classroom, there are days where that's all we achieve as well. Yeah. And in the office, there are days when that's all I achieve as well. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I think, you know, that that certainly helps me and I know that it will be helpful for parents. I was talking to actually a teacher earlier today about those expectations that we often place on ourselves and how unrealistic and unhelpful they are. Um, yes. Yeah. So. And they're unrealistic for ourselves as much as they are for our kids. Um, we're not teachers. And I know that a lot of parents are being told, you're not teachers, your job isn't to teach. And I've had, you know, parents saying to me, well, how can I even keep them engaged? How can I get them to sit still? Why won't my kid listen to me? Um, and I think that they're not listening because there's more interesting things. The TV is three feet to their left. And if I'm sitting at home or I'm working from home, it's really hard for me to stay at my desk and not go kick back in front of YouTube. Um, and I'm an adult. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, this is where we say, um, you know, in, if I was walking in your shoes, I'd feel the same. Um, and so maybe you break up the tasks of the day into five or 10 moments of, of some learning and then you, you know, go to the TV um, and then you come back again. Or maybe you do five or 10 minutes of learning and then you do like some kind of fun learning, like pull out the Play-Doh or teach you know, weights and measurements through measuring flour to make cookies. Um, there are other ways to learn besides completing a worksheet. And if you want to upload a picture of your cookies and scribbles all over the recipe to seesaw, your teacher's going to be fine with that as well. When it comes to your adolescence, there's a little bit more expectation of their self-guided learning. Um, but again, we're hoping, and this is a little different for those VCE students where my heart really goes out to them, um, reach out for help contact tutors there's a lot of zoom tutoring going on where parents are feeling out of their depth get in contact with someone where that is their job access the teachers hound them with emails they'll probably hate me for saying that i'm sorry teachers um, but you know they are available they're at the schools um, or they're at their desks and they really want to be of use to your students send them your questions do not expect things of yourself that that are unfair be kind to yourself and I think that that's a big point, you know, being kind to to ourselves, um, mm. especially now. So that's yes. huge. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah. The, the conversation that I was having with the teacher, actually, she did say to reach out to them. So mm. that's, you know, I'm sure that, you know, teachers won't hate you for doing that. So you're off the hook, Melissa. <laughs> Anything else that you think some of um, the parents that you support um, go to you or have come to you for that you think would be helpful for those in the community? 
Yeah, I think some of the questions that I've had asked are things like, how can I keep my kids social in this period of time? Like yes. they're sick of Zoom. Yes. Um, I've had questions about how can I keep myself sane? Um, what do I do when mis myself and my partner are, are trying to do work and, you know, there's a toddler walking in through the door? Um, and the first thing I'll say is, is that this is really normal at the moment. Yes. Um, I think that there are most managers in most settings that are going to be absolutely okay with you having a meeting with a, a nudie rudy two-year-old running around behind you. Um, this is a period where I've never met a society that is more compassionate, um, which is really nice. Um, I will say things like um, when it comes to having kids who are really, really social and are sick of Zooming, um, it's because kids don't normally talk. Um, they they communicate through play. Um, and so when they're trying to just have a conversation with their friend, that's not mimicking how they would typically interact. So I know, Carmen, that you put up a video the other day talking about getting out into the driveway and playing some board games or, you know, going for a walk together. Um, I would say that if you really feel like you need to be in the house and like Zoom or, or Skype or one of your only options, engage in play through the screen. Um, put on a puppet show for your friend. So you create a story and then you watch theirs and you can ask questions. I would say, can you guys come up with a pop quiz for each other or an interview for each other? Um, can you find a way to be creative through the screen? I have had um, a gorgeous little client who's been playing um, with her puppets and her dolls in front of her screen with her friend and they're making up stories. So, you know, their toys are going off to the park and then the friend will say, oh, I think I'm going to go on a swing and they'll, you know, create a swing together. So it's this creative play that they would normally be doing together maybe without the running around, but in front of a screen, because just chatting is not the same. No. Um, and that's the same for parents. I know it's a hard slog, but if you can get down on the ground with your kids for a couple of minutes every day um, and spend some time just playing with them, that's going to be even better in some cases than school. So pull out Monopoly because playing Monopoly is about maths. It's about um, social interaction. It's about language. It's about following rules. It's about sitting still for periods of time. All of these are school skills. Um, and what you're doing is you're creating family time, memories around something that's going to teach them things, but is maybe not set out as being a task. Send a picture of it to Seesaw, upload it, email it to the maths teacher, tell them, share the pride. Um, I think that part of what I've heard from some friends is that they're feeling like the work that they're doing um, or clients, I should say, as well as, as friends, is that the work that they're doing with their kids doesn't feel meaningful. Um, like, you know, maybe their teachers aren't ticking off on all 20 of those worksheets um, or, you know, the kids aren't getting that feedback of reading a piece of work out to the class. Um, I've got my nieces and nephews lined up this Sunday to give me a bit of a spiel about something that they've learnt this week. Um, I've had clients have to give presentations to their grandparents about Japanese class this week um, or, you know, how to pretend to have a phone call in Japanese to their grandparents, even if their grandparents can't understand it. Or can they show a spelling test, a look, cover, write, check to their grandparents or an aunt or an uncle or to the parent that wasn't home with them that day. Um, and, you know, they can do it through Zoom. They can do it face to face. There's so many different options. Um, mm. You know, do the homework in groups with friends. Mm. Um, so I've got a little nine year old client who's been doing her spelling and her writing and her story writing with her friend through FaceTime. Um, which is nice because then she's getting that social interaction as much as she's getting the work. This is how we can make it meaningful as we make it social. And that's ticking a few of those boxes, which is really good for mental health generally. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, also being creative. And this is a time yes. when, you know, when I think we've been thrown in the deep end and forced to um, be creative um, and think outside of the box. So, yeah. I mean, we're in house size boxes at the moment. So even yeah. thinking inside the box is actually, you've got a lot of resources yeah. available to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great. Okay, well, thank you, Melissa. That was um, 
Fantastic. So um, thank you so much for sharing those amazing tips. And hopefully parents will remember to be kind to themselves, not only the children, but also themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and make this memorable for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, I've put together a couple of blog pieces on the VEDA website um, where I've put together some strategies for managing homeschooling, talking about taking breaks, um, our expectations regarding children's attention span and adult attention span is 30 minutes. So a child's attention span is absolutely going to be much shorter. Um, yeah. So, you know, how can we reinforce things? Can we create a token economy where we maybe give them a stamp and they can earn iPad minutes? or um, TV time or runaround time? What can we do um, to help with home um, learning or remote learning? Um, but also talking about, you know, how can we manage our own COVID anxiety and the uncertainty that comes with this period of time? Um, and that's really about kindness and making memories rather than really putting this, this onus on ourselves to be teaching our kids long division. There's no way that my kids will ever have a chance of learning long division from me. Um, but they can bake cookies and, you know, we can play Lego and we can count the dots on Legos. Um, that's, that's what's going to be engaging and that's what's kind and that's what's fun and that's what's family time and that's applied learning. So think about the fun stuff and the kind stuff rather than high, 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 unreachable expectations that aren't kind to you or your kids. Um, and thank you, teachers. You know, the teachers are there. They're ready and available. Um, they want to talk. They want to answer questions. Um, they don't want you guys to feel like you're left alone. Um, and that goes all the way through from kinder through to high school. Um, if you've got a high school student who's not able to keep, in, keep up with their work, the parents can reach out to teachers in their place. This is a time to think about community as much as it is about household as well. Yeah. We're all in this together. Yeah, great. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Carmen. Bye.